Issue 33 We start out with a news reporter saying that Eggman is believed to have perished when Death Egg 2 fell from orbit. When I was first reading this, I probably had to stop the video and look for the Sonic the Summer special instead. Damn it, I thought the comic wouldn't have those specials. I read all of the issues of that special, the fourth of which was apparently released over a hundred issues into the comic, and yet the comic, aside from one new character, didn't look like it had changed a bit. Still consisting of short, episodic, light-hearted, predictable stories involving Robotnik, like the early Ace of Archie Sonic, implying that the comic might have a very serious problem with stagnation. I read all of that summer special, and I couldn't find any mention of... Like, like, aside from... Like the one that I just reviewed, showing Knuckles meeting Robotnik. Even then, it wasn't made clear that it was the Death Egg Mark II specifically. It was definitely a space satellite crashing on Angel Island, but it wasn't called Mark II. So, that was, that was really confusing. It, it shouldn't have been constrained to a special. Anyways, Porker tells Amy to turn off the exposition newscast so he can do his work, and Kintipore explains that Eggman's flunkies will never find the Death Egg wreckage on Mobius, so he thinks it crashed into something before returning to ground level. Johnny wonders if it hit the floating island, with Amy dismissing it as a dumb legend in a world full of magic and sci-fi robots, and Sonic on the biplane is just as skeptical. One moment he's genre savvy, and the next he really isn't. It really depends on the the. It really depends on whether they want him to look smart or not. They find the floating island just by randomly flying the plane around in a bunch of clouds, conveniently enough. And Sonic tells Tails to stop trying to talk cool by saying "good dude, buddy," which makes Sonic look relatable since I hated that dialogue too. Tails says that he doesn't like the look of the face of the Tiki, and Sonic replies with a smile. I don't much like the look of your face, am I complaining? Calling him ugly out of nowhere. Tails doesn't react to that insult for some reason, because it's supposed to be funny to the audience. And instead he warns him about an arrow being shot at him from the Tiki. He dodges the arrow, turning around, and says in annoyance, Hey, can you take a joke, little buddy? Somehow blaming him for the arrow when Tails blatantly warned him about it with a panicked voice. Maybe he's paranoid deep down that one day Tails will finally snap at him for all the abuse. He dodges some more arrows as Tails pointlessly says that it wasn't from him, and he snarks, Yeah, I'd sort of guessed that, since he can see the Tiki. He spin attacks the Tiki, drilling a hole through it, wish I could do that in the game, and he makes me laugh a little as he falls down a slope and says sarcastically, Oh yeah, fine, thanks, I like falling to certain deaths. He keeps sliding down the slopes, and then Tails saves him while flying, being told to not cut it so fine next time. Which, he had cut it so fine earlier when he was almost crushed by spikes. Tails says that he'll never make it all the way to the top of the island when he's weighed down by Sonic, so he hopes the tunnel in it will get them back. Also, the island doesn't look completely metallic anymore like it did last time. Maybe, maybe the metallic island I was seeing was actually the crashing death egg? I mean... Uh, I, I didn't really like the idea of Angel Island being metallic anyways. It could have been partially metallic, like it was an ancient metallic future area. And like Eggman could have at least mechanized Angel Island temporarily. Sonic says the walls don't look very solid to him because the plot wants him to know that he can headbutt through them, while remarking that if he turns out to be wrong in his intuition, he's gonna have one sore head. Reality doesn't ensue, as his assumption is correct. I wonder how high the number would go if I bothered to count every single time that Sonic was either worshipped or turned out to know something he shouldn't know. Since he clearly has flaws and makes a few mistakes, he's not an outright Gary Stu, especially since uh, he does earn the respect he gets by being a hero, but he's definitely a creator's pet. And don't be surprised if I call him a Gary Stu, because it's more insulting that way. Sonic snarks that one of the badniks is the dumbest looking badnik he's ever seen, being a good audience surrogate. And apparently he was fine from jumping into its spikes because he got his invisible force build up just in time, which he refuses to tell Tails about right away. All he has to do is say, I have rings. Instead, it's just poorly written. Tails finally asks the question of what they're going to do with Eggman once they finally find him. Sonic calls him his little friend, complimenting the question, and he finds him instantly for convenience's sake. 
Then Sonic runs right into Knuckles' fist, because it's time for a comic to steal story ideas from the games again. As next up, it's a Sonic 3 adaptation. Meanwhile, we actually get a continuation of the Nice Nick virus plot thread. I was worried it'd be forever dropped. The Bad Nick Repair Squad sends a balloon with a Sonic face on it up in the air because the Motobugs with more peaceful tendencies wouldn't be programmed to attack it. Then after Bad Nick gets mad at another one for killing one of the many perfect flowers he found today, they start a fight because apparently the Nice Nicks don't necessarily have peaceful tendencies. And later on, those bad nicks go after the repair squad while assuming that one of them turns Sonic into a deflated balloon. <laughs> I guess stranger things have happened in this universe. Sadly, the story ends right then and there. I like that the focus is more on the bad nicks than on the hideous bad nick repair squad that I don't care about. The first story was by Nigel Kitchen and is the start of the comic Sonic 3 adaptation where Sonic and Tails find the floating island after some brief doubts about its existence in a world full of magic and sci-fi. Not much really happens in it. The only standout moment is that Sonic calls Tails ugly, and Tails doesn't react to it. No, something bad happening to Sonic doesn't count as comeuppance. It needs to be Tails doing it to him. I mean, you could at least have Tails, like, throwing a rock at him. Or not a rock, but, like, something a lot more soft. Like, you could have Tails teasing Sonic more. That would be less annoying, considering it's a Fleetway Sonic. I mean, it gets inconvenienced by robots all the time. Who cares if a Tiki throws an arrow at him? And the second story was by Mark Isles, and it's about the Nice Six going after some flower-destroying Badniks, and then going to attack the Badnik Repair Squad. But then the story ends right at the climax. Well, that's a shame. I was pretty interested. I hope the nice Nick concept keeps being used past the story arc instead of wasted on just a few badniks that'll get destroyed. 